the world's most famous avenue, the Champs-Élysées in Paris. Today, it is the road to gold for the world's finest figure skaters. Two world champions from Russia hope to shine in the city of light. Maria Butyrskaya looks to build on last week's win at Nations Cup and begin to cut into Michelle Kwan's lead in the overall standings. Alexei Yagudin is gunning for his third straight victory, and with it, a guaranteed spot in the Grand Prix Final. While the Americans here are under the gun, Sarah Hughes, the 14-year-old phenom, and Michael Weiss, the U.S. men's champion, each need a medal to keep hope alive in the series. The men and the ladies decide the titles of Trophy La Ligue, next on ABC Sports. Today in Paris, the focus is inside the Bercy Omnisport Palace, where the ladies and the men skate for gold here in Trophy La Ligue. Hey, and hi, everybody. I'm Terry Gannon. Welcome to the fourth stop in the ISU Grand Prix of figure skating. This series starting to intensify now as we get closer to that Grand Prix final, which will be held just down the road from here, about two hours from Paris in Lyon in January. The ladies will take the ice a little bit later for their free skate, and when they do, the reigning world champion from Russia, Maria Butyrskaya, she's the leader after the short program, but she'll be trying to hold off the charge of the young American, 14-year-old Sarah Hughes, who is currently in third place. Susie Wynn will join us for the call of the ladies' competition. Right now, though, the men on the ice warming up for their free skate, ready to decide their title. We welcome in Olympic silver medalist Peter oh. Carruthers as the crowd starts to get a little energy here. This men's free skate really comes down to a showdown between Alexei Yagudin, the world champion, and Michael Weiss of the U.S. Yagudin can clinch a spot with a win in the Grand Prix final. He's been terrific so far. Well, no matter what you say about Yagudin, he calls it in when the pressure's on, and he's really making all the men not only be great jumpers, but have good presentation and style within the body of their free program. What to look for with Yagudin in the free program? Well, he's got the big quad planned and eight triple on top of that strong interpretation of the music the choreography is good when he's skating well and the power of his skating will he be strong at the end of his program he wasn't so strong at skate america and skate canada but here in france he hopes to step it up well, Alexa Yagudin, the leader after the short program, but Michael Weiss, the U.S. men's champion in second place right behind him. An important competition for him, trying to stay alive in the Grand Prix. He's had to deal with some problems, a stress fracture in his left ankle, but the short program for him, a gutsy one. Well, the stress fracture is definitely a factor, but for Michael Weiss, what he did so well in the short program was come back from an unbelievable body slam after the quad. He went on to do a great triple axle, triple toe loop it will be that go for broke attitude that he needs in the free program to be competitive with Alexei Yagudin what he needs to do is make his injury not get any worse than it is it is the beginning of the season he's got eight triples in a quad plan stamina may be a factor because he hasn't been able to practice his triples as much as he'd like and he has the Toreador character <laughs> in Carmen it's hard to work in the character while you're doing all those difficult jumps but he hopes to bring it alive here in France well, so far, after the short program, the Toreador in second place, right behind the world champ, Alexei Yagudin. Laurent Selbel, the crowd favorite here at home in Paris. He is in third. Remember, the top three control their own destinies in the free skate. Overall, the Grand Prix standings look like this. Through two events for Elvis Stoiko, he is in the lead. But remember, you can skate in up to three. Two of them count in the standings. And Alexei Yagudin skating in his second scoring competition. And Michael Weiss, this is why this event is so important. Right now, he has just five points. That's not cool. And getting us underway here in the men's free skate. Listen to this crowd. You know he's from France. Vincent Restoncourt in fifth place after the short program and the silver medalist from the French National Championships last season. uncertain as to whether or not he will attempt the quad if he does he's got it scheduled here in the beginning 
Yes! Oh. What a sensational start to this men's competition. <laughs> Amazing. Rest on course, getting to the music from the soundtrack of The Mask of Zorro. Oh, didn't have to check out to stop the rotation on the triple axle. Great quad, but misses three and a half rotations. to vault him up into the air. Nice triple flip. Plenty of good rotation there. Talk about the character within the music. This is the Mask of Zorro. Eighteen-year-old is from just outside of Paris. Silver medalist at the Junior World Championships a year ago. Turned out of the first triple axle. He's looking for a continuous flowing edge out of this one. And a nice triple loop. Sorry, triple toe loop right after it. He's really doing well. About three minutes into his free skate. Remember this program, four and a half minutes in length and worth two thirds of the overall score. Triple loop. It's an edge takeoff. You don't use the toe pick to get you up in the air. You just push off of the edge. This young Frenchman really skated well with a gigantic quad at the beginning of his program. Great start. Well, he said coming in, if he does not finish in the top three here at Trophy La Lake, he's going to take the rest of the Grand Prix off and get ready for the French Nationals. Last year, he was a second-place finisher to Laurent Telbel. I don't know. He's in fifth after the short. Good look at a top three. Holy moly, does he get up in the air on this one. Just climbs up to the top. Rotation intensifies at the apex of the jump and then has plenty of time to get out. Look at the, 
joy that he's got and well deserved. And then this outstanding triple axle, triple toe, the first. Not finished yet, uses that left leg to vault him into the air. A little tilted, but gets out. Good one. Now here's what the judges are looking for in the men's free program. They want to see a well-balanced program. That is one with a good mix of spins and jumps, footwork, and the jump technique. That is the flow in and out of the jumps, the height of the jump, the position in the air, originality, choreography for sure in there, and then the quality of spins. Is the spin centered? Is it fast? And is it effective? This is the man that just last season won the Junior Grand Prix Final. Now on the senior level for technical merit, 5.4 to 5.7. These are probably some of the highest marks he's seen, and they're well-deserved. Regardless of his ranking in the world, he really earned some good scores. And in terms of the top skaters in this competition, he leads it off here, and uh, very high marks from the judges for that spot. The presentation, not quite as high, 5.3 to 5.6, Vincent says, all right, I'll take it, that's all right. So he sets a very high standard here in the men's free skate. Up next, the leader after the short program and looking for his third straight win in the Grand Prix, the world champion Alexei Yagudin skates when we come back to Trophy La Ligue. Welcome back to Paris on everyone's list of the great cities in the world. And next week, we travel to another one, the city of Peter the Great, St. Petersburg, Russia, the site for Cup of Russia. It comes your way next Sunday at 2 o'clock Eastern, 1 Pacific. The men's and the ladies' free skates. You have Genny Plushenko trying to clinch a spot in the Grand Prix Final, and Arena Slutskaya trying to do the same on the ladies' side. 2 o'clock Eastern, next Sunday from Russia, right here on ABC Sports. Sur la glace, representant la Russie, on the ice representing Russia, Alexei Yagodin. Back inside the Bercy Arena with the world champion taking the ice and the leader after the short program. And so far here in Paris, he has skated like the world number one. Alexei Yagodin with two wins already in the series. This one is second scoring competition, trying to wrap up a spot at the Grand Prix final. And I really think this is a terrific program. The music is from the soundtrack, Broken Arrow. Watch the choreography, how he interprets the hard jumps, spins. It's brilliant when he does it. Try to get things going with the triple axle, triple toe loop. His upper body is so strong that he can pull those arms in and really create that rotation. short program and here in the free skate two programs so far two successful quads but he can't let down forget the quad now he goes right back in to the triple axle he has to check out oh very solid two-time world champion two-time European champion, only 19 years of age. From St. Petersburg, Russia, now living in Freehold, New Jersey, and says he wants to become an American citizen as soon as possible. Still so strong, such a competitor, such an athlete. And right 
there that he springs off the ice and gets right into the spin. Great. Three minutes into the program. Can he stay strong to the end? If that's any indication, no problem. Fell on that spiral at Skate Canada. An easy move, but just breeze through it there. gets at the end of the program. That man is such an athlete. I respect his ability to be so strong yet incorporate good choreography. Well, he wasn't overly impressive in either of his first two wins, Skate America or Skate Canada, an entirely different story here in Paris. The best skater in the world at the top of his game, Alexei Yagudin. Managed to get off six triples and this. Now look at the height he gets. Great air on that jump. Such spring, such command. Adding a lot of presentation and style throughout. After this event, he says he's going to go take a week off laying the sun in Miami for a while. First set of marks. We expect the highest marks we've seen so far in the Grand Prix for Alexei. Really solid marks. Five eights all the way across the board. The only mistake he had was a small double Lutz, but can't take away. And for presentation even higher, look at that, a couple of 5.8s and the rest, 5.9s across the board after that. For Alexei Yagudin, the reigning world champion, solidly in the lead. So the challenge now falls on the shoulders of Michael Weiss, or more specifically, on the left ankle of Michael Weiss. He is now having to wear a metal plate in his boot because of the stress fracture. But the American champion will take the ice with a chance to win when we return to Paris. The Arc de Triomphe at the end of the Champs-Élysées, the final stage every year for the Tour de France, one of the great moments in sports annually. Well, the ISU Grand Prix of figure skating rolls on. From Paris, we take you over next week to Peter the Great City, St. Petersburg, Russia, the men's and ladies' free skates Yevgeny Plushenko of Russia trying to clinch a spot in the Grand Prix final. The ISU Grand Prix heating up. The fifth of six events comes your way next week. Cup of Russia next Sunday at 2 Eastern, 1 Pacific, right here on ABC Sports. Back inside the Bear Sea Arena, it is Michael Weiss, the reigning U.S. champion, who will take the ice next in second place overall. For him, this event is all about continuing the momentum that began last year when he enjoyed a breakthrough season. After many years of coming up just short for the national title, Michael Weiss rose to the occasion, taking first place at last year's U.S. Nationals. Going on to win the national championships was, uh, you know, was a great achievement for me, and 
I really carried that confidence onto the World Championships, and I skated a solid program there, and I think the confidence uh, throughout the year kind of built me up and, uh, and carried me to, the, to a medal at the World Championships. With his first clean quadruple jump finally under his belt, and a bronze medal at Worlds, Michael now has higher expectations for himself. I think it's going to be crucial for me to win the events early in the season uh, and continue to win the events if I want to be a, um, a number one contender at the World Championships. But his season took a detour at his first event, Skate America, where he finished a disappointing fourth, which he attributes to a lack of focus due in part to the birth of his son, Christopher. It was kind of just a conglomeration of, of, of the whole month was, was very busy for us, you know, kind of the excitement of, of the pre-birth and then the excitement of the actual birth and then trying to get used to it and, uh, and the fact that I was injured before I left and, and just, just everything was a bit of a distraction for me. I feel now like, like I've gotten kind of used to the scheduling and used to the, to the situation now. Sur la glace, représentant les États-Unis d'Amérique. On the ice, representing United States of America. Michael Weiss. Well, he was certainly focused during the short program. As Peter mentioned earlier, the fall on the quad, a hard fall, but he came back strong to go to second place. So he controls his own destiny, a hard act to follow after Yaguden and what he did on the ice. But here is the reigning U.S. champion and world bronze medalist. Michael Weiss. so hard in the short program on this quad. Now he tries it again and gets a lot closer on that, but still folds at the end. Much better attempt there. Michael told us he has been aware of the stress fracture for the past month and a half, but it's bothered him much longer than that. He's taking medicine to regenerate the calcium in that ankle, but it really does affect the quad, which we saw him fall on earlier, because he cannot practice it nearly as much. Oh, unfortunate. And to further that point, he's actually cut his jumps in half as far as how many he does per session. So, it inhibits his ability to jump at this point. Edge takeoff, ah, oh, timing. Confidence seems to be falling off a little bit.
can get this triple, could help him with his comeback. Very good there. Nice triple Lutz. Terry, you know, being a former athlete, what it's like to play in a season with an injury. It just is so difficult because you're not where you want to be in practice, and then you get the competition even harder. Well, the only way to get a stress fracture healed is to stay off of it, and he can't afford to do that right now. I'll tell you, I think he gave a really good effort considering the circumstances that fall upon Michael Weiss. Well, high hopes heading into the free skate because, as we said, a courageous short program coming back, even with the injury, to have a near clean short program after the fall on the quad. But the free skate, a different story for Michael Weiss. Very intense going into this quad, however, gets up into the air. And remember the height that Yagudin had? Well, he just doesn't have it there. And crash, down he goes. And then again, that lean following through. And problems on the triple axle. Michael really needs to be at least in the top three in the free skate portion to stay in second place overall at the end of the night. First things first. First set of marks, 5.1 to 5.4. Oh boy, down as low as 5.1. This is the world bronze medalist. Not where he wants to be in the season at this point. His coach, Andre Wisiger, longtime coach, and the USFSA 1999 Coach of the Year, by the way. Presentation marks 5.3 to 5.7. So Michael Weiss now, at the moment at least, in second place, right behind Alexei Yagudin. More of the men's free skate comes your way when we come back to Trophy La Ligue. Right after this message and a word from our ABC stations. This Trophy La Ligue update brought to you by Robitussin. Earlier here in the Paris competition in Paris, the French team, Sarah Abby Fall and Stefan Bernadies, skated to their first win of the season in the Grand Prix. Nothing sweeter than to win on home ice in front of family and friends. And Sarah and Stefan both live and train in this area. A solid victory over Totnianina and Marinin of Russia. Zagorska and Shudek of Poland finished third. Overall, the Grand Prix standings right now look like this. Abby Fall and Bernadies move into a first place tie with the Canadians, Salé and Peltier just ahead of the reigning world champs. And then the Americans, Ina and Zimmerman, trying to tie down that final spot in the Grand Prix final. They now have 14 points. Yeah. Alexei Yagudin, your leader right now, and Michael Weiss right behind him. Vincent Restencor of France in third as the men's free skate continues with Ivan Deneuve of Bulgaria in good position in fourth after the short program. The three-time and reigning Bulgarian national champion. on the first jump. Not a good run out on the second triple. Now if he attempts the quad, he's got it scheduled right here. No, that's only a triple.
five triples left in his program. And they just get harder as the clock ticks on. That's quite an opportunity for the 21-year-old from Sofia, Bulgaria, because last year he finished 14th at the World Championships. Here, certainly a chance to medal. Better run out on that jump. What I mean by that is the flow of the edge and the speed he has coming out on the landing. Next triple axel. Really good height. Able to spring into the air. Fast rotation generated by the arms coming in. Legs together. Another good one. Pitch it forward, but not bailing on these. section at the end of the program. Got to change direction, show different edges, backwards and forwards. Showing the agility of the skater. Triple sow cow, no. Saw that big break in the air. He tries it again and another failed effort. Kind of a ditch effort to just do whatever you can before the music stops. Well, how much will the last 20 seconds cost him? Well, I would think it will definitely affect him, and he was trying everything he could at the end. And fourth, heading into the free skate, trying to stand on the podium. Triple axle, always a forward takeoff. Nice height on this. Good landing, backs it up, but starts to come to a halt on the triple toe loop. Again, wishing he had more run out on the end of that. And this is the next triple axle. Starting to lean, but you can see the ice fly up. That's the teeth on the front of the skate stopping him from actually falling forwards. Levan's a busy man these days. Besides skating at this level, he's also currently serving in the Bulgarian army. First set of marks. You hear the crowd react to these. 5.3 up to 5.7. Wow, well, that was a very good marks. He should be very pleased. These are threatening marks. And now for presentation, 5.3 up to 5.8. The 5.8 coming from the Bulgarian judge. And that's going to place Denev into third place. And it <laughs> oh. actually changes the order of standings. Michael Weiss now goes down to fourth place. So you've got Yagudin, Restan Court, and Denev, your top three. <laughs> Coming up next, at home, the Frenchman Laurent Telbel, who sometimes finds it challenging to bridge the gulf between the American and French senses of humor. Last year, I did uh, 
yeah, like something like funny program in France it was. I had during the tour 20 standing ovation and arrive in America and after two tour, two shows they say, okay, please stop it and do a new one. <laughs> and it didn't work at all. Paris in the springtime. Well, not exactly. It's been kind of chilly here in France this week, but a great destination any time of year. And a reminder tonight on ESPN, the Minnesota Vikings go to Arrowhead to take on the Kansas City Chiefs. That's live at 8.15 Eastern time. Then tomorrow on ABC, the high-powered Jacksonville Jaguars take on the Denver Broncos in a Monday night showdown. The 30th anniversary season of Monday Night Football continues tomorrow live at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, right here on ABC Sports. And the final skater in the men's free skate takes the ice now in a position to win in third place after the short program. Six foot four, Laurent Tobel, the national champion of France. Austin Powers comes alive in Paris. And Peter, you remember his free skate at Skate Canada where he finished six, but maybe the most entertaining free skate of all, the fire alarm went off during his program. Somebody pulled it as a prank. He never missed a beat, skated right through it. No fire alarm here, but guaranteed huge triple. Ah, oh, he just didn't get the rotation. He was moving into it well, but didn't create the rotation for the triple. Can't get over this guy, 6'4". He gets up into the air, and it's just spectacular to watch, and certainly entertaining to boot. Timing, upper body, lower body working together. Good rotation on the triple Lutz. Tobel's in competition or exhibition, guaranteed you're going to get a character on the ice. Big double actually wanted a triple for that, but skated a little close to the boards on that takeoff. Could have spooked him. Triple loop on that, but he never got off the ice. 
Got to have the height to create the rotation. you want for the triples. <laughs> Did you see the movie? <laughs> Works either way. Nice triple lots, triple toe loop. Very strong finish. It's always so funny to watch the crowd and how they react to Laurent Tobel, and of course here in France, it's probably as difficult as anywhere else, but it ranges from a chuckle to a full guffaw to a shake of the head, looking at the guy next to you, figuring out, what is this guy doing on the ice? And then he ends up skating really well at the end of the program. Some big triples let fly. Laurent Tobel, maybe not the program he had hoped for, but in third heading into it, we'll see. Hey, Terry, this is at the end of the program. Had some problems earlier, but not here. Gets right up where he needs to be. Continues through with a good triple toe loop. Very good for him. And remember, end of the program, it's what the judges remember. Go ahead, analyze this, Peter. Okay, that's uh, Tobel having a good time on the ice. In front of his Parisian friends. Oh. Okay, so third place. What happens now? The first set of marks, 5.2 to 5.4. Oh, that is not a happy camp right there. Five twos, a five four. Judges not saying it was enough at the end to do a triple lutz, triple toe. And now for presentation, you would expect these to be higher. And not much, 5.4 to 5.6, so an unhappy group because Laurent Tobel falls from third to fourth place. And the other unhappy camp, that of Michael Weiss, who falls to fifth overall here in Paris. But the champion, Alexei Yagudin, for the third time, the winner of this event, picks up 12 Grand Prix points and a check for $30,000. The surprise finish, the second place of Vincent Reston Court here in front of the home crowd. And Ivan Deneva of Bulgaria rounds out the top three. Right now, let's join Susie Wynn, who is with the champion. Susie? Thanks, Terry. We meet again. You have had two great performances in the Grand Prix Series. Now you're going to the finals. What do you think about all of this? Actually, I was a little disappointed because I was not tired this time. <laughs> so when I skated really good, and I am so excited to be three-time La League champion. Now what are you going to do to recuperate from all of these victories? I know just have a little rest, like for a week I'm going to Miami to rest a little for a week and then I'm going to still work and still competing. Does this give you a lot of confidence to defend your world title down the line? Yeah, actually I thought really bad at the beginning of the season, but now I feel great and I just want to compete more and more, so I'm great and I feel great now. Congratulations, Alexi. We'll look forward to seeing you in the finals. Terry, back to you. All right, Susie, and as we take a look at our Dove winning moment, we see why Alexei Yagudin is a three-time winner of this event. The quadruple jump, which started his free skate. Add to that six triples, and you've got a championship program. Yagudin now in the lead overall in the Grand Prix with 24 points. He will be in the Grand Prix final. Stoiko should be there as well. Michael Weiss, by the way, not mathematically eliminated yet, but he's not making any reservations for Lyon. Well, coming up next, the ladies have their turn. Maria Butirskaya, the other reigning world champion from Russia, will try to hold her lead over American Sarah Hughes, who is currently in third. The ladies' free skate comes your way when we return to Trophy La League.
Welcome back to a city that is on everyone's short list of the world's great destinations. Few places can match the combination of style and history that makes Paris what it is. We welcome you back inside the Bercy Omnisport Palace as Trophy La Ligue continues now. The ladies taking the ice to decide their title with the free skate. Hi again, everyone. I'm Terry Gannon. For the second straight week in the Grand Prix series, Maria Butirskaya, the reigning world champion from Russia, takes the ice in the free skate as the overall leader. She was able to close the deal at Nations Cup just a week ago in Germany, and here she's trying to do the same, and now for the first time, earn points. That was a non-scoring competition for her, so she's trying to cut into the overall lead of Michelle Kwan, who has won twice already in the series. We welcome in two-time U.S. champion Susie Wynn right now. And Susie, to be frank, you look at Maria's skating, and already in the short program, much more impressive than she was just a week ago in Germany. Oh, absolutely, Terry. She's really using these series to hone her skills and lay the groundwork to defend her world title this season. In the short program, she skated flawlessly, showing the elegance and the technical prowess of a world champion. It's going to be hard to defend her title, but she still shows that confidence. But I've noticed in practice that she's always got her eyes looking behind her at the American Sarah Hughes who's a nice young skater. <laughs> Looking behind at a uh, skater who's about half her age, Sarah Hughes, Peter, 14 years of age. It's amazing to see her at this level. And this is an important competition for her, fighting for her life to stay alive in the Grand Prix. Absolutely true, but I have to think back to when we first heard about Sarah Hughes. That was at the 98 Nationals when she won the Junior National title. But now she's competing against a world champion here in France. And her big challenge will be to learn how to skate with that lump in your throat, the pressure. Regardless of your age, the top ladies in the world of figure skating have to learn how to deal with the pressure. And Sarah Hughes' time is right now. So the standings after this short program, Maria Butirskaya on top, then fellow Russian Victoria Volchkova, only 17 years of age, and a younger teenager behind her, Sarah Hughes, trying to catch Maria Butirskaya. The overall Grand Prix standings, Michelle Kwan with two wins, guaranteed a spot in the Grand Prix final in Lyon, France, by the way. You go down the list, and Sarah Hughes, this is why it's so important for her. She's in eighth place and has five points right now. She may need to finish in the top three to have a chance. And now, before this final group can take the ice for their free skate, that's Lutetia Hubert of France over by the boards. Now, she's been suffering with an ankle injury, and she may have injured it just a moment ago here in the warm-up. And that's a dead giveaway right there. When she bent her foot in the skate, it presses on that ankle, and she knows mm. that when it compresses on the jumps, no chance. She is stepping aside. And you know she wanted to skate badly here in Paris. She is from Paris and could not skate at Skate Canada because of an injury. And she's actually had ankle problems, hamstring problems. So it has no, not been a good out. season for Letitia Hubert. And we get the official word now she does withdraw from this competition. Representing the Japan. On the ice, representing Japan, Fumi Sugori. So the first to take the ice, Fumi Sugori of Japan, the silver medalist in the Japanese National Championships last season, 18 years of age, and in fifth place after the short program. She was scheduled to compete at Skate Canada, but was forced to withdraw as well with an injury. This will be the hardest triple that she has in her program. It's the triple Lutz, double toe loop, first jump. Got plenty of height, but didn't check out to stop the rotation. No double toe loop at the end of it. It's free skate, by the way, four minutes in length and worth two thirds of the overall score. Right there, a complete breakdown of keeping the timing and the pacing you need to get up in the air and rotate three times. Pressure. So far, 
are struggling on all the triples. The 18 year old scheduled to compete in two Grand Prix events here in Paris and in her home country, the NHK Trophy. Solid season last year, a second place finish at Skate Canada. So she's got three triples left. Let's see if she can get it back here. Salkow. triple planned in the program. This is the triple LUT. She missed it in the beginning and no, it's really unfortunate. Get a thing in your head when you're not skating well and uh, it just continues on through the whole program. Just starting to come of age on this level. 18 years old, 20th at the World Championships last season. Well, Tony Siguri. You hope a performance like this doesn't ripple through the whole ladies' event. Unfortunate. On the triple jump here, this is the triple lutz. Right foot gets you up into the air. The air position looks okay, but watch the landing. She folds and then just steps out of it. That set the tone for the rest of the program. And now here, she's a little bit cautious. This is the triple toe loop. No chance because the foot doesn't plan in the right way. Timing's gone, pattern's wrong, and this just followed throughout. Two sets of marks, of course. The first for a technical merit. 4.3 up to 4.8, the range for Fumi Siguri. It's a real disappointment to see so many mistakes. I don't want to make it sound as though this is easy, but she just really got off to a shaky start and followed the same thing through the whole program. Presentation marks 4.6 up to 5.2, so a little bit better on the presentation side. 18 years of age, Fumi Siguri of Japan. When we come back, the national champion of Hungary takes the ice. In sixth after the short, Diana Pope will skate after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Been a great week here in Paris, the fourth of six events in the ISU Grand Prix of Skating. Next week, number five comes your way next Sunday from St. Petersburg, Russia. Two o'clock Eastern time, it is Cup of Russia. The men's and the ladies free skates Arena Slutskaya of Russia. The two-time European champion trying to fight and claw her way into a spot at the Grand Prix final in Lyon, France. Two Eastern next Sunday right here on ABC Sports. On the ice, representing Hungary, Diana Pott. Back inside the Bercy Arena here in Paris, Diana Pope takes the ice, the national champion of Hungary. 
18 year old from Budapest. She is in sixth after the short program. Diana has a very ambitious program planned. She has two triple triple combinations planned. In the short program, she landed the triple toe, triple toe in grand style perfectly. a triple toe, double toe, but remember, this isn't the short program, it's the free program, no deduction, so that was a good start. Oh, my gosh. She is from Budapest, but she spends the summer in Connecticut training. And really made her move the last couple of seasons up the ladder. In 97, she was 20th at Europeans, and last season she ended up just off the podium in fourth. Gosh, you know, it started with Siguri. She struggled in her free program, and now we're seeing some of the same kinds of things happening to this young lady. They're backing off instead of charging into these jumps. I don't, you don't necessarily watch others when you're waiting to skate, but can it be contagious in an event? Sometimes you can feel it in the building. You can yeah. hear it in the reaction to the audience. You can see it in the face of your competitor. here with the triple sow, half turn, double axle. I've noticed that sometimes they bring it on home in the end. <laughs> presentation going but when you put the heat of competition on some of these ladies they just seize up and the timing goes she knows she's capable of much more than that especially in the jumps but came back at the end as Susie said she was, could see the 16th pole and the finish line <laughs> just ahead the last minute or so of her program Diana Pote of Hungary now here is the triple toe loop that's the first jump, fine, good timing. Then she just does an easy double. That's no problem. Those were the first two jumps in the program, but things didn't go so well after that. And you can see here, the lean, the foot doesn't come back. That is the left foot to stop the rotation. If you take off crooked, well, you land crooked unless you fix it in the air. 
Now we'll see what's reflected in the marks now. The first set for technical merit, 4.5 to 4.7 the range. I can't believe the event's underway, and we're seeing fours to begin yeah. this competition. See if we get some fives now for presentation for Diana. Yeah, these are higher, 4.8 up to 5.1, but still not what you would call in the high range. Not even close. So the effort for Diana Pote of Hungary. Up next, the lady in second place after the short program. 17-year-old Victoria Volchkova tries to upset Maria Butirskaya when we come back. Welcome back, everyone. This Trophy La Ligue update takes us back to the ice dance competition earlier here in Paris and the much-anticipated season debut from Marina Anasina and Gwendal Pezera, the reigning world silver medalist from France. expectations as they skated their way to a gold medal off to a great start in what should be a promising season with three major events taking place here in their home country including the Grand Prix final in the town in which they train Lyon and a scene in Pesera with the win over the Italians who Serpoli and Morgaglio, Jobiasco and Vanagas finish third. The Grand Prix standings overall the two teams from Italy, Lithuania, in a battle at the top right. Now, remember, though, a number of teams have yet to compete in two scoring competitions, including Anasina and Pace Ross. So it may be very difficult for the Americans, Lang and Chernichev, to get to Lyon. The top five in ice stance make it. The ladies' free skate continues now as Victoria Volchkova of Russia takes the ice. In second place, she controls her own destiny here. She made it from St. Petersburg. She now lives and trains in Moscow. We haven't seen many triples from the ladies in the competition, but this young lady has seven planned. She has wonderful power and energy and her opening. Double toe, very solid, beautiful. Now that's the way you take command of the performance. Right away, she's attacking the jumps, not letting them control her. Look at the determination on the end of that. Opened up her shoulders on that triple loop. Wasn't able to get the height to clear the rotation. Remember the American teenager, Sarah Hughes, still to come, but Victoria, another one that will be part of the next generation of skaters to dominate this sport. You would imagine last year a great year. Bronze at Junior World, third at Russian Nationals, and a top 10 finish at the World Championships. Now, right there, she gets it back. She had a little bit of a stumble on the last triple, but there, once again, getting control of the performance. Nice triple. She's got the feel of those jumps now. Very powerful. She really fills out all of her movements, making beautiful shapes with her arms and free leg.
You know, she's 5'5", five, five, but she appears to be about 5'10 or 5'11 on the ice, doesn't she? She has a beautiful leg line. Great stretch through her back, for sure. Now that will get the judges' attention. The second triple lutz in the program. Triple lutz, hardest jump next to the triple axle. You can really see the stretch through her camel, change camel into an illusion. Very elegant. to what we have seen, Susie. It was a big step up as far as the jumps are concerned and in the presentation of the program. She's a real pleasure to watch. watch. She looks very comfortable. She has a lot of great qualities in her skating. And the jumps came together. Impressive from a 17-year-old. But when a world champion is in the lead, there's very little margin for error, and there were some mistakes. It was just a relief to see some of these jumps get off the ground. Nice triple lutz here. Great height, nice tight air position. Beautiful run out into the combination, the double toe loop. Now this is a great jump to look at and how good rotation and then a check out before you hit the ice happens to give you success like that. Very nice jumping mechanics in place. First set now for Victoria Volchkova. 5.3 to 5.7. She did have some mistakes, but two great triple lutzes in that program. Yeah, the coach is happy about it. Viktor Kudryavtsev, well known in Russia, used to coach Maria Butirskaya, Ilya Kulik, Olympic gold medalist. Second set now, 5.4 to 5.7. So Victoria Volchkova has now set the standard. She has the lead here in the ladies free skate. But up next, another teenager, this one from America, a chance to get her first win in the Grand Prix Series. Sarah Hughes takes the ice when we come back to Paris. The International Skating Union, the sports federation that governs figure and speed skating worldwide. With a membership of more than 50 countries, the ISU is responsible for the technical control and the direction of the world's most important skating events. The International Skating Union, bringing you grace, power, speed, and champions since 1892. Back in Paris with a look at the teenager who has already established herself as a large part of America's figure skating future. Sarah Hughes is determined to keep her life as normal as possible. Here's a look at a typical day in the life of the 14-year-old phenom from New York. After establishing herself last year in the senior ranks, now seventh in the world, Sarah Hughes is still awestruck. After nationals, I just felt like a new person and I was free and, and oh my gosh, I'm going to Worlds. This is a dream come true. I watch Worlds on TV every year. 13 years old, Dick, her first trip to the World Championships. She is the fourth of six children growing up in a sports-loving family in Great Neck, New York. Trying to become the best skater in the world, though, doesn't mean she'll get special treatment in this family. Yeah, 
at home, she's no different than anybody else here. I mean, she's got to fight for her television the shows and for her uh, cereal in the morning is the same as everybody else. No one here really, uh, you know, in the family treats her any different than anyone else. But Sarah Hughes is different. She travels, she trains, and as a high school freshman, only goes to class three hours each day. It's 10.15 in the morning. While most of her classmates gossip at their lockers, Sarah has finished school for the day and leaves for the rink, making the transformation from giggly 14-year-old to serious athlete. She practices for three hours with a short break for lunch. Training on the ice is intense, but she and her coach, Robin Wagner, have a special chemistry. Sarah's really what I call like a, a precious jewel. It's, it's very special for a coach to have someone like her. Practice ends with ballet. And at 5.30, they're back on the road heading home, but the long day is still not over. Sarah is a high school freshman once again, concerned about finishing up any homework she hadn't completed in the car. By 10 o'clock, she's off the bed and will awaken the next day and the next and do it all over again in pursuit of her dream. On the ice, representing United States of America, Sarah Hugh. Well, this day in the life of Sarah Hughes, much different than most because she is in third place and controls her own destiny with a chance to upset the reigning world champion. She told me that if she can get past the triple flip, which is the third triple in her program, she will be home free. Double axle, followed by a triple toe loop. Good pace. No, she doesn't even get to the third triple down on the Second one, that's the Lutz. Remember, Volchkova just did two of those in her program. Just last season that Sarah defeated Victoria Volchkova at the Junior World Championships where she captured the silver medal. They're so, both of them are so matched and their abilities, it'll be fun to watch them battle it out each competition. There's the triple flip. Third triple. Final point about that Junior World Championship a year ago. With that medal, Sarah becomes eligible for the Senior Worlds this year. The ISU rule is that if you medal at Junior Worlds a year prior, you can go to Worlds. Otherwise, she wouldn't be eligible. She's only 14, and you must be 15 by July of this year. Back-to-back -back triples, the first. She's changed it. She opted not to do the second triple. Superior camel spin position and she changes to the inside edge. Very pretty spin. triple lots and first one she missed so it was nice that she was able to get that up and out
beautiful layback position, lovely arch in her back, very pretty turned out leg position. Robin Wagner, her coach, the two are so close, and medal or not, with each competition, you can see your confidence grow. The lump in her throat that you had really <laughs> gets a little bit smaller every event. It really does, Terry. I think she won the Junior Nationals in 98, so this is a big step up for her. Managing that pressure, a learning experience, that's why coach and skater are happy. She opened up the program with a beautiful double axle, getting great height, great tempo, very well thought out. Steps right into the triple toe loop. Again, very strong beginning. But then she struggled on the Lutz jump, just not getting the height, almost pre-rotating her shoulders, not getting that height to clear the rotation, wasn't even able to get that right leg back to toe in for the toe loop. So Victoria Volchkova in the lead right now. Maria Butierskaya is still to come, of course, but what can Sarah Hughes do now with the marks? The first set, 5.2 up to 5.5, that's the range. The all important presentation marks. I, I think she's happy that she really made it through as well as she did there. It was a new experience for her to take this pressure. 5.5 up to 5.8 for Sarah Hughes. Actually got three first place ordinals from the judges, but overall in second place behind the Russian teenager. Thank you. And there's a look at Maria Butierskaya backstage getting ready to take the ice next. But the only thing she loves as much as figure skating is the shopping scene here in Paris. Uh. I like Europe. Paris is one of my favorite cities, and I feel very good here and very comfortable. I feel very peaceful, and I like walking through the streets of Paris. The reigning world champion from Russia will take the ice when we come back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. representing Russia, Maria Burtiskaya. And now back inside the Bear Sea Omni Sport Palace, Terry Gannon, Peter Carruthers, Susie Wynn with the final skater of the competition on the ice, the reigning world champion, Maria Butierskaya. She was brilliant in her short program. She begins to earn points with this competition. because the timing on the first jump was so good. Not the case on the second. This is the second time that we've seen this free skate to Tchaikovsky's Swan Lake. She debuted a week ago at Nations Cup where she only completed two triple jumps in that program, but still won. Terry, she said she wasn't disappointed because it was an opportunity to get the pacing of the program and to find out where she does make the mistakes.
but she's fighting. Can you see that? The way she just was not going to go down. Solid triple sow cow. position in her back sit and look her hands behind her back that makes the spin nice and fast and more difficult. I thought this performance was a lot better than Nations Cup last week. She seemed to be able to get more of those triples under her belt. She's still settling into the program however. Sarah Hughes with a coach Robin Wagner was watching the entire program backstage very intently. She is in second place now behind Victoria Volchkova but Maria Boutier Sky just completing her free skate. Triple flip. Uses the right foot to vault into the air, but then shoulders get up too high and doesn't even get close for the landing. What I like about this jump is the determination she has at the end. Watch how she'll snap that back up again and absolutely not go down. In the old days, that is just a couple years ago, she would have spilled on that determined world champion. And we'll have her marks when we return to Paris in a moment. The Grand Prix of figure skating. Today's coverage of Trophée La Ligue on ABC Sports brought to you by Serta, we make the world's best mattress. RCA, changing entertainment again. Oscal. Don't take chances. Take Oscal, the calcium supplement proven effective and doctor preferred. And WebPC, new from Dell. Welcome back to Paris on everyone's list of the great cities in the world. And next week, we travel to another one, the city of Peter the Great. St. Petersburg, Russia, the site for Cup of Russia. It comes your way next Sunday at 2 o'clock Eastern, 1 Pacific. The men's and the ladies' free skates. You have Geny Plushenko trying to clinch a spot in the Grand Prix final. And Arena Slutskaya trying to do the same on the ladies' side. 2 o'clock Eastern, next Sunday from Russia, right here on ABC Sports. Back in Paris, will Maria Boutierskaya win another title? Her marks coming up here momentarily. And when I say the old days, two years in the life of a female in skating is quite a long time, really not a long time, but she's improved a lot. First set of marks, 5.2 up to 5.6. That's a disappointing 5.2. The Hungarian judge with a 5.2 for the world champ. And now for presentation, these are much higher. 5.6 up to 5.8. 
five, seven, the five, oldest world eight, champion in history five, six, doesn't look overjoyed five, seven, by those eight, marks, five, seven, but five, seven, she eight, does end up five, on top of the Thank leaderboard. You. Maria Butirskaya with her second straight win in the Grand Prix of Skating. And this week, she does pick up the 12 points for the win, so she starts to come into that overall lead of Michelle Kwan and the $30,000 check, by the way, for the victory. Victoria Volchkova finishes second. Sarah Hughes finishes in third, and American Brittany McCann, who skated earlier, she finishes eighth. Right now, Susie Wynn has made her way over to have a word with the bronze medalist, Sarah Hughes. Susie? Thanks, Terry. Now, Sarah, this is your first medal in a Grand Prix event. Tell me what you think about your performance. I'm really happy with how I skated, and I went out there very determined because I knew I, I was prepared. Now, was it at all intimidating on these practice sessions with Madame Butraskaya, the world champion? Oh, not at all. Um, it's an honor to skate with her because she is the world champion, and I respect all world champions. Now, did she try to give you a hard time at all? No, we all respect each other. Well, that's great. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you. Terry, back to you. All right, Susie, thank you. A look now at the overall standings in the Grand Prix for the ladies. Michelle Kwan still in the lead, the two wins, but Maria Butirskaya, 12 points with the win here in one competition. She has one left. Sarah Hughes in a good spot with her bronze medal today. Jennifer Robinson also with 12 points. Victoria Volchkova of Russia now with nine points. Well, from here, we go over to a very chilly St. Petersburg, Russia. Next week, it is Cup of Russia coming your way here on ABC Sports. The two headliners there, Yevgeny Plushenko, the reigning world silver medalist on the men's side, and on the ladies' side, Arena Slutskaya, the two-time European champion. Two o'clock Eastern, one Pacific. Cup of Russia coming your way next Sunday on ABC Sports. Reminder, ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, continuing the tradition of excellence. Until next week, for Susie Wynn and Peter Carruthers, I'm Terry Gannon. So long from Trophy La Ligue in Paris. See you in Russia.